Ah, the ocean state of Rhode Island. Of course, it's known for its beaches, but the nation's smallest state has a lot more to brag about. We start in the capital city on an open air boat tour along the Providence River. They named it the Providence River after their settlement here. Roger Williams described finding this place, he said, through divine providence. More than three and a half centuries later, there are noteworthy nods to the past sprinkled throughout the city. Off to our west here along the seawall, you can see some brass dates on the wall with some lines underneath them. 1938, 1954, the third one, 1815. The lines represent the hurricane tide levels here in downtown Providence in those years. Thomas McGinn and his wife, Kristen Stone, have owned and operated the Providence River Boat Company for the past 15 years. The large dam-like structure across the river in front of us is the Fox Point Hurricane Barrier, and this is what the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers came up with as a solution to the hurricane flooding of 1938 and 1954 to protect downtown Providence from future hurricane tide surge. We love activities where we can get out and do different things as a family, and so uh, a boat ride like this, we learn a little bit about the history. I've always been a history buff. I tend to not forget things that I've read or learned about the city, so a lot of that are things I already knew, and other things are a knowledge I've had to go look up over the years. I try to add something new and interesting every year. And that isn't hard to do, since the city has seen a lot of change over the past few decades. The city had decided that the rivers, which run through downtown Providence, were an eyesore, and they just decked the entire thing over with bridge work. Prior to 1988, from here north, you could not see water at street level. This was entirely covered. In 88, they began to tear that all down. These new bridges and walkways were all opened and dedicated in 1993 and 1994. In 2010, the relocation of Interstate 195 freed up nearly 20 acres of land for development, including the new Providence Pedestrian Bridge, opened since 2019. It connects the city's west and east sides. Next to the walkway, you can stop at the sign of the lemon and grab a frozen Dell's, of course, lemonade, one of Rhode Island's iconic seasonal treats. Further east is Providence's Wayland Square, where you'll find an array of shops and restaurants and books on the square. We're an independent bookstore. You can walk in and find something you didn't know what you wanted or expected to find. And if you're looking for a recommendation, we can certainly help you find something. Jennifer Kandarian is the manager of the store, stacked with 12,000 books, stationery, games, and the presently very popular puzzles. Since COVID hit, puzzles have just skyrocketed. Normally we would sell about 300 puzzles a year. We've sold over 500 in two months. The store's been here since 1992, a bookstore withstanding competition from online retailers. Good for them. A feat Kandarian attributes to one thing. If it wasn't for our community, we wouldn't be here. <laughs> Just down the block, a grand view of that community from Mare Rooftop Restaurant. The east side of Providence is absolutely beautiful, very historic. To get a view of the bay is second to none, is gorgeous. The airy eatery stands 4,000 square feet with decks on each side. Ron Coffey is the general manager. We get about 60, 70 feet of open air within the dining room. The menu is modern American with a seafood focus, offering dishes like the seared scallops, grilled octopus, and spaghetti alle vongole, plus a Neapolitan oven to make pizzas like the prosciutto and arugula. The pizza oven is straight from Naples. We got a crane to move it in all in one piece up here on the fifth floor. It wasn't easy, that's for sure. Mare just turned two at the beginning of June and is hoping to become a mainstay. We want it to be an iconic kind of place in the city where you say you can't leave Providence without going to Mare first. After you do presumably leave on your way back home, take a trip back in time for a double feature at the Rustic Triview Drive-In. Thank you. Okay, thanks for coming, guys. Yes, three screens off Route 146 in North Smithfield near the Massachusetts border. So this is screen one. Tonight we play Sonic and Doolittle. General Manager Holly Ann St. Jake's has been coming here since she was a kid. I've known this place a long time. You know, it's a big part of my childhood. It's a big part of my kids' childhood now. Her daughter continues the family tradition, working here at the snack bar. It's a nice place to bring your kids. We get a lot of children that are autistic because they're allowed to walk around and do their thing, and it's outside. It's nice to get some fresh air. Are you going to screen too? So you can see him right there, and he'll point you in the right direction. And at 27 bucks a car, the price 
is pretty family friendly too. We do pretty much sell out every night. My family comes, you know, everyone's family comes. It's a lot of friends that are always here. I know somebody every weekend. I love this place.